A quick way to compute V out and transfer function for this single op amp amplifier for the two cases shown here. First thing, uh, we assume that the virtual short is valid for the op amp in the circuit, assuming that it is properly biased so that it's operating in linear region of operation, let's say plus minus 5 volt supply applied for the two supply voltages of the op amp, and because of the negative feedback, assume that op amp is in linear region, not saturated, therefore we can assume that the voltage at negative terminal is equal to the voltage at the positive terminal. So virtual short, basically. Now, uh, obviously, no current can flow through the input of an ideal op amp because uh, ideal op amp has infinite input impedance. So that's why I show that the current going through this terminal is zero. Therefore, 80 ohm and 10 millihenry are in series, effectively. So V positive as a function of V in, given the series of 80 ohm and 10 millihenry can be written this way. We can say voltage at uh, positive and also negative input terminal because of virtual short is equal to just uh, ZL, which is the impedance of that 10 millihenry, divided by R plus ZL. So that's the voltage division times Vn, which as a result, we can just uh, quickly just write. Uh, that's 10 millihenry, which means 0.01 henry times S, LS. That's the impedance of inductor, plus 80 ohm, plus 0.01 S, and then, of course, times V in. And then in summary, we get equation number one that says voltage at negative, the same as voltage at positive, input terminal of the op amp equal to S divided by 8,000 plus S times V in. So we keep this as equation number, we keep this as equation number one. It's very important for us. We're going to use it to get to transfer function and then answer the question for part A and B. So that's equation one. For equation two, we have V out as shown here. And you can see that we have effectively, because no current can flow through the input terminal, whatever current come out of the come out of these two caps, and uh, let's say whatever can end up going this way, it should go this way. There is no way for that current. So effectively, the parallel of 8 nanofarad and 25K is in series with the 5K shown here. Uh, and therefore, the voltage V out uh, is just a, sort of a result of a series of these two resistors where we have in the middle voltage at negative term, input terminal of op amp. So if you write a simple KCL here, we can find V out uh, as a function of uh, V negative like this. V out divided by V negative is equal to just one plus, uh, and then you have the cap in parallel, or let's say the impedance of cap, which is one over CS, in parallel with the impedance of 25K resistor, and that's divided by 5K that you have there. So that is what we get for the, as a result of voltage division between these two resistors. If you simplify this equation, what you get is, and since V out and V positive is the same thing, what you get is V out is equal to, uh, as a summary, just when you simplify the whole thing and then when you use equation one to substitute for V positive, what we get is, maybe I just do it in two steps so that it's easier to be seen. So what we get is S plus 30,000 divided by S plus 5,000 times V positive or V negative. So that's my equation number two. And then we combined one and two together because V positive can be related to V in via this equation number one. So combination of one and two, he was the final outcome that we are interested in, which means the transfer function of this linear circuit is, which is V out divided by V in, of course in S domain, is equal to just simply S times S plus 30,000 divide by S plus 5,000 
which is the denominator, one part of denominator coming from here, and uh, S plus 8,000, which is the second portion of denominator coming from one. S plus 8,000. So this is the transfer function that we were looking for to find for this linear circuit. Now we can jump into answering the question for part um, A and part B. In part A, as you can see, the input is 300 millivolt UT. And as a result of that, it's uh, super easy to just say, okay, that's in time domain. So equivalent V in, a, in S domain is just simply 0.3, which means 300 millivolt, and UT Laplace transform of that is 1 over S. So that is the equivalent of V in in S domain. So let me just clearly write V in. Okay. Now what we need to do is just uh, we need to substitute this into the transfer function we found. So if we do that, what we get is you multiply to find V out, we, we just say V out S is transfer function times V in S. And of course, V in S is 0.3 divided by S. That S will cancel out this S in numerator of transfer function. Therefore, as a result, what I get is S plus 3000, 30,000 uh, divided by S plus 5,000, S plus 5,000 times S plus 8,000. Okay, and uh, we are at a point that we can just simply do partial fraction expansion. And that's as simple as saying that this can be rewritten as S plus 5,000 plus another fraction that is in the form of S plus 8,000 in denominator. If you just solve for this equ uh, equation, then you will find that numerator for uh, this one is equal to five, uh, sorry, is equal to uh, 2.5. And you will find that the, the numerator for this one uh, is equal to negative 2.2. So that is V out in S domain. And then from this point on, it's super simple because it's well known that when you have uh, an S domain function that looks like this, then the equivalent time domain function, time domain version of that is equal to 2.5 and then uh, to the negative 5,000 T a UT, and uh, we have negative um, 2.2, because negative 2.2 in numerator, and then S plus 8,000 translate to E to the negative 8,000 T UT. So the whole thing need to be multiplied by UT, and UT is unit step function, which means the value of it is in time is zero for t less than zero, and then at t equal to zero, we have a jump to uh, one. So that is the meaning of standard unit step function that uh, we have to use here. So ut. Okay, so we found the response of this system to in for the case one when e input is applied as 300 millivolt ut, which means V in is zero, and suddenly at time zero, we in jump to 0.3 volt or 300 millivolt, and it stays there forever. That's the way input is working. And as you can see, this one is saying uh, at time zero, um, the circuit will have a jump to uh, say the value of because at time zero, t equal to zero both of these guys become one, the circuit has a jump to 0.3 volt. Uh, but then when T goes to infinity, uh, the steady state response of the circuit at infinity is zero. So uh, basically you can sort of imagine that at infinity, at, uh, let's say at when, when we get to infinite time, 
then what happens is the circuit would have an output voltage that is zero. So this is sort of a showing transient response of this system when input is applied as a unit step. For part B, so this is part A. So for part B, um, it's, in, it's uh, easier because we are dealing with a steady state response of a linear system or circuit like this to an input that is a sinusoid in the form of two cosine 10,000 T. So we know that it means uh, omega is 10,000 radian per second, 10 kilo radian per second. And uh, since a system has a, a transfer function HS, we know that uh, the output uh, in steady state is very important. We are not looking for transient response here. We are looking for a steady state. So steady, the steady state response V out is just simply as well known for any linear system is just the transfer function when S is substituted with J omega, where omega is 10 kilo radian per second, uh, times the input. The input in this case, uh, two cosine, of course, um, two cosine in the, in the phasor format, right? So two cosine, and then we have, uh, I'm trying to just uh, make sure I'm not missing something. So times input, let's say. Okay, so if in this case we need to find, all we need to do is let's find h of j omega. So if you find h of j omega, you will figure out that if you substitute in this uh, formula we have for hs in this one, if you substitute s with j omega, omega being 10 kilo radian per second, and you simplify it, you will end up with uh, a total response in the form of 2.21 and then uh, phase of, so that's magnitude value 2.21 and then phase for uh, H omega at omega 10 kilo radian per second negative 6.34 degree roughly in degree. Of course you can mention that in radian as well. So that, what is the meaning of this? It means what this cosine comes in at omega 10 kilo radian per second with amplitude 2, the system will multiply its amplitude by 2.21. Therefore, V out is just simply 2 times 2.21, which means 4.42. And cosine, the linear system doesn't change the frequency of the incoming sinusoid. So 10,000 or 10 kilo radian per second T remains as it is. Initial phase is zero, there is no further argument, but then the system will add a negative 6.34 degree to it, to incoming cosine, so negative 6.34 degree. So that is the steady state output in, in this system for part B. I hope that this example in, is helpful in terms of how to deal with finding the transient response and a steady state response for uh, an amplifier like this in linear mode of operation.